Hi, my name is Steve James, and this is the More Abundant Life Podcast. This is episode number 438, Dynamic Change and Call to Service. This is a teaching I did a few years ago leading up to our Pentecost Fellowship, and I thought it would be great to hear this leading up to next week day of Pentecost. All right, well, God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this morning, I'm I'm teaching on dynamic change and call to service. Dynamic change. I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, people move in, in their lives, they move to another location, things change. They get married, you know what happens? Things change. You have a baby, things change. You have two, things really change. All for the better. All for the better. But there was a time in history where things dynamically changed. And Jesus Christ told people about it and what would happen. And that's what I'm looking at, that dynamic change. I want to start in in John chapter 14. Jesus Christ, this is the day in which he was betrayed and captured. The same day, it's after the Last Supper. And in verse 12, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. So he's telling those people that were there at that Last Supper meal, that the works that he did, if they believed on him, that they would be able to do also. And greater works than these shall I do, shall he do, because I go unto the Father. Now, looking back, we know that Jesus Christ has already gone to the Father. So, if he's already gone to the Father, then we can do the works that Jesus Christ did. And then it also says, and greater works than these, which is pretty neat. So, Jesus Christ was letting people know there's going to be some change happening, and I call it dynamic change dynamic change. And just read a little bit more. It says in verse 13, and that whosoever ye, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. So Jesus Christ talking says, something different is going to happen. A dynamic change is about to happen. And this dynamic change, he says, you, you're going to be able to do the works that I do, and greater. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I'll do it. He'll do it. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. And then he says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, and that comforter may abide with you forever. Now, by knowing the church of Christmas, we know that that comforter is Holy Spirit, and we know that it's Christ in us, the hope of the Lord. Pretty good. And then if you go down to verse 26, it says, it gives you more information about the comforter. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. When we get that Comforter, we don't ever have to be afraid. We can be comforted. We have peace, not as the world gives, that peace, but the peace that Jesus Christ gives. You know what this is? This is all indication of a dynamic change. Something's going to change mankind forever. And Jesus Christ made it available for mankind to be changed forever in a dynamic way. Dynamic way. And let's let's go back and look at Luke chapter 24. We're just going one book back in verse, in chapter 24. 
And we're going to start in verse 44. And this is Jesus speaking again. This is Jesus talking about that dynamic change that's going to happen. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. See, he was telling them about what was written in the Old Testament. He tells you exactly the law of Moses and in, in the prophets and the Psalms, the things that were concerning me, him, Jesus Christ. Verse 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Which is pretty neat. And this reminds me a lot of what the Apostle Paul did in the book of Acts. He would show them Christ from the Old Testament from the scriptures. Verse 46 says, And he said unto them, Thus it is written, it's written, it's in the word of God, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to raise from the dead the third day, and that uh, repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And that remission is forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sins. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Once again, Jesus Christ is telling me, he says, you're, there's going to be a change. You're going to receive the promise of my Father. You're going to receive that. And it's going to be power from on high, endued with power from on high. The word endued means clothed with power from on high. That's what uh, Rose's translation says. In verse 50, And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hand and he blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. So Jesus Christ is letting them know some kind of dynamic change is about to happen. And it still happens today when people believe that word. It still happens today a person, man or a woman, you know, boy or girl, uh, hears the word of God and they believe it, they can get endued with power from on high. And then their lives change dynamically. Uh, let's go back another book to Mark. Mark chapter... 16. And we're looking at things that Jesus Christ said was going to happen. And he tells them in pretty good detail what's going to happen, don't you think? Yeah. I do. In verse 15 it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature or everyone. What does your translation say? To all creation. To all creation. Pretty uh, pinpoint what Jesus Christ is trying to say. And that's why I call this teaching the dynamic change and a call to service. He's really saying you're going to be changed. You're going to have power from on high. And with that, there's a little service that you can do. Pretty neat, huh? And here he says you go into all the world and you preach the gospel, the good news to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They sh shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That's a dynamic change in a person's life. What happens to a person's life is if they get sick, now they can pray and be taken care of, be healed. Recover, it says here. If they are possessed with devil spirits, they can be, have the devil spirits cast out. If they drink any deadly thing, or if they're bitten with a snake, it reminds me of the Apostle Paul. He was gathering some sticks out of the fire, and a viper bit him on the hand, and he shook it off into the fire. And everybody watched to see him die. But he didn't die. He just 
kept living. They go, well, they thought they saw that he had the power to do that. We have that same ability. If we drink any deadly thing or something bad happens to us, we can uh, pray for one another. We can lay hands, you know, like uh, I think of like what Betty and Nick did the other day, well, a month now, and recover. And recovery is always available to believers. That's, that's a dynamic change. That's a dynamic change. Those people were just sitting there watch, waiting and watching for Paul to die. That was gone before this happened. When someone got sick, you just look at them and watch them die. You know? But now, you can pray for them. We can teach them God's word. They can be endued with power from on high. Let's go to the next book, going backwards to Matthew, chapter 28. I love, I love the Bible. It's fun. Sometimes, you know, like when I'm just hanging around or whatever, and I, and I think, you know what, we're different people because of that Holy Spirit, because of what we believe in God's Word. We, we just look at things differently. What we, what we think is fun is different than what other people think is fun. You know, we, uh, we know we got power. We know we can be healed. We know that we still have the same struggles that everybody else has. We just handle them a lot different. We pray and we believe. We go, we, if we hear, and we should pray for this. I just thought of that. Uh, if we hear that someone is sick, we should pray for them. You know, and we do. I know. <laughs> well, you know, and we do. And uh, you know what happens? They get healed. Uh, Rebecca's friend, I'll just say it, Rebecca's friend, Nika, Rebecca is telling us that, well, she had to go see her. She, they brought her to the hospital. So, go ahead, Rosa, you tell her. Nika is very much like Rebecca. She, she's real giggly and, and the same age as Rebecca. But, she, and she lives in the same house with Rebecca. She's the reason Rebecca went to New York. They, so they've been living together. They're pretty tight. And uh, she texted me the other morning, can you go to the emergency room during the day? And I'm like, yes, what? <laughs> What's going on? And uh, she texted me back, uh, it's uh, Nika. And so then I text her back, What's going on with Nika? You know, and she goes, Her stomach's going crazy. And I'm like, Okay, well, the, the younger winners, I think it, and I, you know, the you live with will be able to tell you where to go and, and how to get there. She goes, Yeah, we're on our way. We're, we're all set. I'm like, Okay. So then um, later on, she called me, and I said, so what's happening with Nika? She goes, oh, she's, she's been in the hospital. Um, well, no, I tried to call her because I hadn't heard how it went. And they said that uh, she was that, that Rebecca didn't answer. Uh, so I called the younger winner's house, and somebody answered, and they said that they didn't know what was going on with Nika, that she hadn't been feeling well, and they had done an MRI on her. And um, they didn't know if she went to the emergency room because they wanted her to, or because she thought she should. And Rebecca was off doing some errands now, and uh, I said, okay. So then it was like the next day, I talked to Rebecca and asked her what was going on with it, and she said that she'd been in the hospital uh, all night, and the mom was there. The underwater mom and Nika's mom were in the hospital. It was like 2 in the afternoon. Uh, and they said that she might have viral meningitis. And I was like, uh, you know, also she had like a flu and stuff, and they said, yeah, but I guess it's, it's not, it's bad. And uh, I go, what are you talking about? She goes, well, I didn't know what it was, so I asked Nika, and she said, you can either die from it or get mental retardation. I go, really? And I've heard of meningitis, a lot of college kids will get it, and if they don't catch it quick enough, it's a, it's a virus that affects the spinal column. They can die from it. If you ever know of anyone that has a flu, ask them to touch their chin to their chest, if they can't do that, they might have meningitis. It's one of the quickest, earliest signs that that, yeah, it makes you want to do it, uh, that that might be something going on with them. <coughs> but then I never heard of retardation happening from her like that. And she said that Nika has a curved spine, and they had to do like five different spinal taps to try and figure it out. And, uh, you know, she just said it, it's serious, and she was off getting supper for everybody and bringing them food because they were staying in the hospital. I said, well, me and Dad will be praying, Rebecca, and, and uh, expecting good things. So then I didn't hear from her. And the next day, I texted her, how's Nika? 
She goes, oh, she's a lot better. They, they're thinking it's not meningitis because she's doing so good now. She's back home. And I'm like, great. So last we heard, she, she's much better. And uh, it's not spinal meningitis. So praise God. <laughs> but keep Nika in your prayers. Yeah. So if it yeah. was, she got healed. Exactly. You okay. know, so and it, there was people praying for her. And that's what we do as believers. We just handle things differently, is like I was saying. You know, we hear about something like that. We don't go... Oh, no, no. we got to start, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, we just handle it a lot differently. That's good, Rosa. <laughs> well, we handle it a lot differently. We pray, we believe, we, and that happens in any situation that we know is different than what God would want for us. Both, both uh, health and prosperity-wise, you know what I mean? Anything that, you know, we know from God's word, we can say, oh, wait, that isn't right, let's get God involved with it. So, we're in Matthew chapter 28. And we're going to start in verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach in all nations. And then comes this phrase, Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That phrase is a deliberate forgery of God's word. Uh, in earlier texts, that phrase wasn't in there. Uh, if it wasn't in the Gospel of John, which we looked at. It wasn't in Luke. It wasn't in Mark. It wasn't. It's not in the Book of Acts. If Jesus Christ would have told this to Peter and those guys, they would have gone out and did it. They didn't do it. There has been, in the book of Acts, you can see some things about baptizing and about John's baptism also. But it's always uh, said in the context of John truly baptized with water, you're going to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. So if you take that phrase out, it really makes so much sense. He says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So Jesus Christ is saying, power, I got power, I'm giving you power. And you'll be able to do some great things with this power. And let's go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. So Jesus Christ is teaching, he's saying something that's going to happen. And it's going to be a dynamic change. Probably a bigger change than moving to another place. Probably a bigger change than getting married, even though I like being married. Probably a bigger change than even having children, because I love having children. This is a change that goes from uh, not having power to having power. And in Acts chapter 1, in verse 4, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, ye have heard of me. See, Jesus is saying, wait for that promise of the Father, which we know is the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, and it's powerful. Then, he, then comes this topic of baptism again. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Pretty neat. Now go down to verse 8. And he says, But ye shall receive power, dunamis, power, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Pretty wild, pretty neat, huh? That's a dynamic change. Jesus Christ kept telling people, this is what's available. This is what's coming. Wait for it. It's going to come. It's powerful. We'll be able to pray for one another. We'll be able to walk in tremendous power. And Jesus Christ already demonstrated this power with his apostles. And in closing, I'd just like to look at a little bit of that in uh, Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. See, what we've just been reading is Jesus Christ is saying, I'm going to give you this power. I'm going to give you this power. And we know that power came available 
in uh, the day of Pentecost. But here in uh, Matthew chapter 10, and in verse 1 it says, And when he had called unto him the twelve disciples, he gave them what? Power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So these disciples, right, he gave them that power. Now we know that we got the power now, but he gave them that power then. And look at verse 8, and this is what he says to them. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. Today, we have received the power of the Holy Spirit. Today, we can freely give. And what we can give can really dynamically change people's lives. Dynamically change. That's why I call this teaching dynam dynamic change and has an added little thing and a call to service. Because he says, go and let other people know this is available. Teach other people. Show other people. And that's what we do. Whatever we can. Because, and quite honestly and quite frankly, to live the way that we do is really so much better than to live the other way. You know what people say in the world today if a, someone's got a sickness? They say, good luck. <laughs> or they say, things will get better. But they don't uh, have any reason why it will get better. You know what I mean? It's more of, they'll get better. Hopefully, hope for the best. Oh, and another thing I hear, another, these people all mean well, so don't, you know, they always say, I'll, I'll have a good thought for you. Yeah. I'll have a good thought for you. Well, we, we do a little bit more. We get involved, we roll up our sleeves, and we'll pray. That's like when Rosa told me about Nika, I prayed. Matter of fact, uh, you guys know this. If anyone called me about anybody at any time that needed help, I, I would pray, like within seconds usually. You know what I mean? Because it's so easy to pray. You call me and say, hey, this is going on, or this person needs help. I go, thanks I for jumping. me, I speak in touch with the situation. Yeah. Not knowing much. Yeah, we don't little I do know. We are a listener-supported podcast. I want to thank those who generously give so that we can keep the podcast available. The podcast is heard around the world for all those who would want to know how to accurately understand the Bible when they read. The episode is complete, so head over to stevejanes.com. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on how to Read the Bible for Understanding and Power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless Word.